In this lesson we're going to look at what is called the unit circle and a unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1 and we're going to use a unit circle to evaluate special angles that are not acute um, so basically any multiples of the special angles that you've already learned 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees and their radi uh, radian equivalents and so let's first talk about a, a kind of refresher memory about the definition of trigonometric functions of any angle and so we had theta was any angle in standard position and the point xy was on the terminal side of theta we know that in a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared and so the radius would be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and we had defined the six trigonometric functions as follows sine of theta is y over r cosine of theta is x over r tan of theta is y over x and the three reciprocal functions so what happens when we let the radius equal 1? Right? Now remember, trigonometric functions are exactly that. They are functions. So for every input, there's only one output. So when we talked about the sine of 30 degrees being a half, that's true whether that 30 degree angle was in a small triangle or a large triangle. Now when we relate these trigonometric functions to a circle, it really doesn't matter what size circle we use. We could have a radius of 5 or a radius of 1. And so we're using r equals 1 just to simplify the process. The other thing that we do when we're using a unit circle is instead of using uh, theta as our angle, we're going to use t and we're going to talk about t as being a real number. And we'll get into that in the beginning of the next unit. But for now, um, you know, just think of t as an angle. It's a new variable. So, so what does this mean for the definition of our six trigonometric functions when we let r equal 1? Well, where we had the sine of theta is equal to y over r, if r is equal to 1, then the sine of t, which again it's our old theta, it's just a new variable, the sine of t is going to equal y since r is 1. y over 1 is equal to y. Same thing with the cosine. Cosine of theta equals x over r and when r equals 1 we get the cosine is equal to just plain old x. The tangent remains the same, it's just y over x and our three reciprocal functions will just be the reciprocal of the original three. So what this means with respect to the ordered pairs x and y on our circle is that for any ordered pair that's on a unit circle, the x coordinate is now the cosine of the angle and the y coordinate is now the sine of the angle. So let's look at let's look at a unit circle that and I've got the the circle that we've used before where we've broken up all the multiples of the special angles and the quadrant angles so we already know since since the radius is equal to one we know the four ordered pairs that belong to our quadrant angles we have the one zero the zero one negative one zero and zero negative one and let's first fill in the first quadrant. Now we know all the ordered pairs on this circle have an x-coordinate of cosine of our angle and a y-coordinate of sine of our angle. We just said the sine of our angle is equal to y and the cosine is equal to x. And so we already know the first quadrant. So let's go up and work with the sine. We said the sine of um, 0 degrees was the square root of 0 over 2 the sine of 30 degrees was the square root of 1 over 2 or just 1 half 45 degrees was the square root of 2 over 2 60 degrees was the square root of 3 over 2 right. that we knew already you could have also generated those from your special triangles we also know that the cosine and the sine we just reversed the order because they're cofunctions so we know that the the cosine of 60 is a half the cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2 the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. So we have our first quadrant of the special angle filled in, of the special angles filled in. And so now 
the trig ratios are going to be the same in the other quadrants, only the signs are going to change. Remember, we used reference angles before, and so we know that the ratios for my 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3, are going to be the same ratios as for pi over 3. So working my way around the circle, I know for my 120, I'm going to use the same ratios as for my 60. So working my way around the circle, I know that for 120, I'm going to use the same ratios as I would for 60. Those both have a reference angle of 60. So I'm going to fill in the, the values as I move around the circle. So this would be 1 half, 2 root of 3 over 2. This is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. Again, reflecting over to the 45 degree. And then this would be the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Now, I'm not filling in the signs yet. I'll fill those signs in in a minute. I'm going to do the same thing. For 210, my reference angle is 30 degrees. So the ratio for 210, the ratios will be the same as it would be for 30 degrees, so the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. For, for 225, it's going to be the same as 45. It's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. And for 240, we're going to reflect up to our 60 degree angle. This would be 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. We're going to do the same for the fourth quadrant. So for 300 degrees, the reference angle for 300 is 60 degrees. So I'm going to use the same ratios as I would for 60. It would be a half and the square root of 3 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2. And then for 30 degrees, it's going to be a square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So now we're going to use our knowledge of the SIGNs, the signs of our cosine and sine, to fill in the signs of these trig ratios. Everything is positive in the first quadrant. I know that sine is positive when y is positive, so sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. So my y coordinates are all positive from 0 to pi. So over, and my y coordinates are going to be negative down in the third and fourth quadrant. So I'm going to put negative values in for all of my y coordinates. First, first, second quadrants, my y values are all positive. In the third and fourth quadrants, my y values are all negative. Now we know that cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrants, where x is positive and cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant, so I'm going to go in and put all the negative values or the negative signs in for my x-coordinates. Basically, this kind of ties in all the, the information that we have about our signs and the trigonometric functions of any angle. And if you know the first quadrant, just by using the logic of reference angles, you can fill in the other three quadrants with the trig ratios and then add your signs. Now, you will not be given uh, these values on a test. Uh, I would give you a blank unit circle without the angles, but I will give you one that has the marks. And some, some people do like to write this down before they take a test so that they don't have to worry about remembering. Some people use the triangles, some people use the, the chart. This is a little more comprehensive, uh, but it's up to you. At this point, I'd like to relate the unit circle back to one of the Pythagorean identities that we worked with, and that was the fact that the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. And so on a unit circle, we have um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now I can rearrange the order a little bit. Sine squared is y squared, uh, and cosine squared is x squared. But the on a unit circle, the radius is 1. So x squared plus y squared 
has to equal 1. And so any ordered pair that we take off of the unit circle, when you square them and add them together, it has to equal 1. So if I take, let's look at this ordered pair right here. For the, the x is the cosine of 300 degrees, and the y is the sine of 300 degrees. If I take 1 half and I square it, and I add that to negative 3, square root of 3 over 2, and I square it, that should equal 1. And that is true of any ordered pair that is on a unit circle. So I get 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, and that equals 4 fourths, which is equal to 1. And that is true, again, of any of the ordered pairs that are on a unit circle.